Today's lesson is on the organization of the periodic table. Many of you have seen the periodic table before, but may be unfamiliar with the information that it contains. Feel free to pause this video at any time so that you may keep up with the notes. First, how is the periodic table arranged? The periodic table contains information about the structures and characteristics of the elements. Elements are arranged in the periodic table in order of their atomic number. Atomic number is the number of protons in an element. Each block on the periodic table contains a certain amount of information. Each element has the name of the element. In this case, we're using carbon. The atomic number, in this case is six, and as we've just stated, the atomic number also tells you the amount of protons in that element. It has the symbol for the element, which for carbon and C, and the atomic mass. Some periodic tables will tell you the state of matter that an element exists at room temperature. Okay, the periodic table is arranged in a few ways. First, it's arranged in periods. All right, a horizontal row of elements in the periodic table is called a period. The atomic numbers increase by one from left to right across a period. Elements are organized in the horizontal periods and vertical rows. Let me show you an example of what we're talking about. The periods are the horizontal rows. Horizontal means moving straight across from left to right. In this case, you will see that there are seven periods on the periodic table. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Period one only has two elements. They are hydrogen and helium. And as we stated, the atomic number increases by one from left to right. Lithium is two, beryllium is three, boron, oh, apologies, lithium is three, beryllium is four, boron is five, carbon is six, nitrogen seven, so on and so forth. This is the case for every period on the periodic table. A vertical column of elements in the periodic table is called a group. Groups are numbered 1 through 18 across the top of the periodic table. Elements in the same group have similar properties. Remember, vertical means up and down. So we have vertical groups of elements. As you can see, we, there's 18. It goes group 1, 2, group 3, 4, 5, all the way over to group 18. Elements in the same group have similar properties, meaning they behave similarly in chemical reactions. So for example, boron, aluminum, gallium, and indium are all in the same group. Therefore, they have similar properties. If I asked you to tell me an element that had a similar property to iodine, that is in period number two, you would be able to tell me, you should be able to tell me that period number two that has an element that's in the same group as iodine that has similar properties, that element would be fluorine because it's in period two and in the same group. The lanthanide and actinide series. There are two rows at the bottom of the table, and they are the lanthanide and actinide series. You may have noticed them. They are listed or shown here. You'll notice that element number 57 is lanthanum. Element number 89 is actinum. And as you've just learned, elements increase by one as you go from left to right. You'll notice that lanthanum is element number 57, but instead of 58 being next to it, it's down here. You can see a dark line here. It says these elements, which are 58 through 71, 
and 90 through 103 have been taken from here where this dark line is and put down here. This is done to save space. So you can just assume or imagine that if the lanthanide and actinide series were put into the periodic table, that it would be a lot wider. This is effective for helping us save space. Metals are on the left and in the middle of the periodic table. All right. Metallic refers to the properties of common metals. Luster or shine is one property of metals. It's easy to identify metals all right, because they are often shiny. Here's an example. Metals are also ductile, which means they're easily stretched into wires much like the wires that go in our earphones when we're listening to music. That's generally copper wire. All right, it is ductile, so it can be easily stretched in the wires. Metals are also malleable, which means they're easily shaped or bent, which is why we can make jewelry, tools, and many other things out of metal by shaping them. Conductivity is the ability of a material to transfer electricity or thermal energy. Therefore, metals are good conductors. For example, if you stuck something metal into a power outlet, it'll conduct electricity and shock you. Or if you have a metal spoon and you're stirring soup while you're cooking, the thermal energy from the soup will conduct up the spoon and you will likely feel the spoon get warmer in your hand. As stated first, metals are on the left in the middle of the periodic table. So, all elements on the left in the middle are metals. The one element that's on the left side of the periodic table that's not a metal is hydrogen. Elements on the right side of the periodic table are nonmetals. Nonmetals exhibit properties that are opposite of metals. They are poor conductors of heat and electricity and they are brittle, which means they're easily broken, and they do not have luster, which means they are not shiny. Nonmetals make up most of the matter in the living world, such as in people, plants, and other animals. The most reactive of the nonmetals are called the halogens in group 17. So the nonmetals are mostly contained on the right side of the periodic table, and they are in this area. The semi-metals, or the metalloids as they're sometimes called, um, are smaller in number. A few of them are contained on the right side of the periodic table as well. They have properties of both metals and non-metals. Semi-metals conduct electricity, but not as well as metals. The noble gases. Group 18 elements are the noble gases. Noble gases are extremely stable by themselves and occur in nature as single atoms. The semi-metals I will show you using a color example from the textbook. Again, non-metals are shown in yellow here and you can see that they are on the right side of the periodic table and contain most of the matter in the living world. The nonmetals or the or the semi-metals or the metalloids are shown in green here and you can see that they are located between the nonmetals and the metals. And also you can see here in blue are the metals and they are again contained on the left and the middle of the periodic table and the one element that is not a metal on the left side of the periodic table is hydrogen and you can see here in yellow. This table is on the inside cover, the back inside cover of your textbook and also on page 292.